earlier today I was listening to Mr. Kale Star, uh, Tim's video, where he was talking about uh, a press conference in which Mike Tyson uh, basically admitted that uh, his supposed sobriety over the last few years uh, has been a ruse, has been a fraud, uh, and he still is battling alcohol and drug addiction. And, um, and that it might be even worse than ever and that he's on the verge of death uh, maybe not physically dying at this moment but if he continues going on the track that he's going uh, one day we're going to wake up and find out that he is no longer walking the earth and um, this uh, subject affects me uh, because I, even though we don't know these individuals personally, we feel like we do because we've seen them so, for so long. And um, listening to the interview, it, it, it had two effects on me personally. And uh, those of you who've watched the interview uh, today with Mike Tyson uh, in the comments section, please tell me how you felt about it. But I'm going to tell you how it affected me personally. Uh, I had two feelings about it. Uh, one negative and one positive. Um, the first thing that went through my mind was we're watching someone who may be at the end of his line. I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to sugarcoat uh, anything. Um, we're watching someone who, Mike Tyson, who, it, 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 to be honest with you, it's almost a miracle that this man has made to 47 years of age. Um, he's put himself in many precarious situations in his past. When Mike Tyson honestly says that he's surprised that he's alive, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, he's just talking. I know what he's talking about. Uh, you read about certain things that he's done in his past, the things he's gotten away with, the situations that he's been in. It is literally a miracle that this man's still alive. Whether it's situations he put himself in, drugs, or what have you alcohol whatever it's a miracle that he's still alive but sometimes I get this sort of Chris Farley type thing going uh, feeling with him like um, I feel like we're watching a, a train wreck but the positive thing that I uh, and when I reference Chris Farley it's because I remember the last year uh, that he was alive he was a, for those of you who are really young Chris Farley was a very very popular American comedian in the 1990s uh, started off with Saturday Night Live, uh, went into movies, uh, hailed from Chicago, Bruce Blitz's hometown. I know Bruce Blitz, if you listen to him, he remembers, remembers Chris Farley. Uh, <clears throat> shout out to Bruce Blitz, I think the best basketball analyst here on YouTube. Uh, haters can say what they want to say, but I, I love the man's videos and he's a decent human being. But anyway, um, Chris Farley uh, was a man who had multiple, multiple addictions, and he wasn't honest about it with himself. He made half heart. He made attempts to um, to quell his uh, demons and to get in his addictions, but they were half-hearted. And ultimately, in 1997, he ended up dying of his uh, addictions. Uh, I think he had a heart attack after a drug overdose. Um, and it was very sad. But one thing about Mike Tyson that gives me hope is unlike Chris Farley, unlike Michael Jackson, unlike Oprah, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Whitney Houston, unlike other countless celebrities that we can think of, he's not living in denial. Remember Whitney Houston and, and all these other people living a, world, uh, living a lie that they're over their addictions and you know they've conquered it and they moved on and in reality they still were hooked Mike Tyson told the truth today Mike Tyson you can see it in that video he said this was his sixth day of sobriety and that you know he really wants to live today uh, I believe was the day that he made amends or it might have been yesterday that he I think it was today he made amends with Teddy Atlas it was an incident that happened between him and Teddy Atlas 31 years ago, I think it was, 30, 31 years ago, where uh, Teddy Atlas uh, 
uh, got wind of the fact that Mike Tyson may or may not have allegedly uh, sexually assaulted uh, one of his relatives, uh, a young uh, niece of his, I believe it was. And Teddy Atlas uh, uh, threatened Mike Tyson by gunpoint. You know, we're not going to go into that. And that caused a serious rift between the two because if I remember correctly, Customato, uh, instead of have, instead of probably going at Tyson and uh, reprimanding him for his atrocious actions, if it is true that he did that, he reprimanded Teddy Atlas. And that was the problem. I think Customato caused a problem with Tyson on that because Tyson was learning that he was, in his mind, special. That he could get away with things and this caused this narcissistic complex that Mike Tyson had and probably still has but he's evolving from that uh, because Cus was so uh, focused on having one last champion before he died so you see Mike Tyson now 47 years old uh, had started his boxing production uh, boxing promotion company and he seemed as though his life was together but we learned that this man is still battling drug and alcohol addiction. And I, I imagine when he's saying drug and alcohol, he's probably battling cocaine. Uh, which is something that he said, yeah, cocaine, heroin, alcohol. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I just would hate to see Mike Tyson not here anymore. Not anytime soon. And I hope for Mike Tyson's sake, sake, for his family's sake, and also for the sake of the millions of people who love this man. And I know Mike Tyson feels like people hate him. I remember in 1997 during the Everybody incident where this was he was the most hated man in the world pretty much, and, uh, especially in this country at least. And uh, my feelings about Tyson never wavered. I always felt that he was a man possessed by demons. Um, I th always thought that wrapped around all of that bitterness, that anger, the frustrations, wrapped around in that is a reasonably good man. Mike Tyson can be a, uh, he's an enigma. He's a person who could be uh, vicious, vindictive, bitter, nasty. He's a person who could be the absolute sweetest man you ever met. Um, but that's his death. That's the, uh, the broadness of his personality. I'm not talking about Mike Tyson the boxer. This has nothing to do with that. Uh, this is more about Mike Tyson. I want this man to beat this problem because whether people can make fun of the fact that he had a lisp as irrelevant to this man's intelligence. I grew up with a lisp. I overcame it. And some people think I have a very good speaking voice now. So a lisp has nothing to do with you know your intelligence this man is very intelligent this man has a lot to bring to the table this man has extraordinary boxing knowledge and I hope that he can be successful in his future endeavors I hope he can beat his addiction and Mike Tyson I make this video uh, hoping that you can uh, overcome this problem and um, I hope you success in your future sobriety uh, well, future success in your sobriety. Um, I know you said it's important for you to uh, receive forgiveness for the things you've done in the past, and you hope that people that can uh, uh, you you forgive people for things they've done for you know to you, and <clears throat> that's signs of maturity. That's not something Mike Tyson would have done 10, 15 years ago. So. I just hope and pray that we don't see this guy, you know, on the cover of some TMZ article, you know, under a sheet. You know, I, I'm just being honest, man, you know. So, Mike Tyson, uh, please uh, stay well and beat this beat this uh, problem that you have, man.